welcome to the channel get rich today the company we are going to look into belongs to technology industry so i already reviewed this stock two years ago it did phenomenally well all the technology sector did phenomenally well so today i'm going to do a earnings update last quarter earnings and my revised price target for this particular company so let's get started so this company is a research based company so they are having a er and d industry so let's have a look at their er and d space so global er and d is going to increase from 1.5 trillion dollar to almost 2.6 trillion dollar from 2020 to 2026 and their addressed market is 86 billion dollar in 2022 almost it going to increase to 108 billion dollar in 2026 and if you look at the india er and d market is going to increase from 35 billion dollar to 71 billion dollar from 2022 to 2026 and if you look at their uh, legacy spend which is the digital engineering spend so digital engineering spend is going to increase 19% uh, from 2020 to 2026 and if you look at the digital engineering spend and 56% of their lds revenue is coming from digital engineering spend almost 59% of global year and spend by 2026 is digital engineering spend and the digital engineering spend is going to increase 2.8x by 2026 and if you look at the lnt technology services so today the company we are going to look into is lnt technology services so it's a q3 financial 2022 update so i already did a video 2 years ago so i just uh, i'm just doing a follow up uh, of this company for the quarter 3 financial 2022 and also i am going to do a revised price target uh, and uh, going through the final just statements again So then if you look at the uh, L&D technology services they have about 57 of a global 100 R&D centers as their clients they have 79 R&D innovation labs they have 90% repeat business that's very very good so their annualized uh, revenue is about to reach 1 billion dollar and their uh, pure play engineering services business so they have 816 pat- patents so they have 20000 plus employees they have 318 global clients and if you look at the, the different industries where are they uh, operating so they are mainly operating in transportation telecom high tech industrial products medical devices and plant engineering and if you look at their some of their key metrics so their market cap is about 46000 crores their stock pe is for about 52.5 currently and their return ratios return on capital employed is 30% and return on equity is 20% and if you look at their return on assets is 13.9% debt to equity is 0.13 it's almost no debt and if you look at the current ratio 3.12 very good and if you look at the price to book value 12.2 bit as bit expensive but we have to see the growth as usual if you look at the price to sales it's also 7.46 and if you look at the price chart it reached about 6000 rupees and it have a recent correction currently it's trading around 4400 rupees and if you look at the p chart it average p is about 23 and it reached 56 recently and currently is trading around 52.5 if you look at their business segments what are their key business segments so about 32% of their revenue is coming from uh, transportation 21% is coming from telecom and high tech and 20% is coming from industrial products 15% is coming from plant engineering and 12% is coming from medical devices and if you look at the geography almost 63% of their revenue is coming from north america 17% is coming from europe and 13% is coming from india and 7% is coming from rest of the world if you look at the on site business offshore they have 59% offshore and 41% on site and if you look at their first business segment uh, which is uh, transportation so their transportation business so they are having a revenue of about 285 uh, million dollar so they are working in infotainment and driver information systems electric vehicle uh, advanced driver assist systems body electronics and so on so they are working in different uh, segments of transportation and if you look at the telecom and high tech so they are also working in advanced silicon technology they are next generation connectivity like 5g iot blockchain ott platform uh, smart home smart appliances wearable so they are working in all of the exciting technologies so their revenue is uh, from this segment is uh, 190 million dollar and if you look at the industrial products uh, they are working with building automation electric drives and power machinery so if from this segment they have about 175 million dollar and if you look at the plant engineering so they are also working with consumer packaged goods specialty chemicals energy and utilities so they have uh, industry 4.0 business so they have a lot of um, business they are working on in the plant engineering so they have 135 million plus revenue is coming from this segment and if you look at the medical devices so they are working with patient mobility and surgical and diagnostic therapeutic and life science uh, so they are also working with different medical devices so the revenue is 105 million dollar from this particular segment 
and if you look at their customers so they have uh, in transportation they have eight out of top 10 um, r&d spenders high tech eight out of top 10 plant engineering seven out of top 10 medical and life sciences three out of top five and in industrial products seven out of top 10 and if you look at their client country concentration or contribution so top 10 customers is 29 percent top 20 customers is 44 percent of the revenue top 30 customers is 54 percentage of their revenue if you look at the million dollar clients 50 million dollar clients they had two in financial 2019 and then they currently don't have any 50 million dollar and their 30 million dollar is also reduced from three to two and if you look at the 20 million plus it's also increased from five to six that's good and if you look at the 10 million plus it's increased from 16 to 22 from financial 2019 5 million dollar plus is 41 to 44 and then 1 million dollar plus is around 6 to 126 and if you look at the growth areas so they are doing for example in electric vehicles medtech 5g AI and digital products digital engineering sustainability so they are doing a lot of um, big growth areas they are doing in this particular segment and if you look at the uh, innovation, so they are doing high uh, voltage uh, electric power trains. So they are doing, uh, for example, reducing SO2 emission for an ONG major. So, so they are electrifying, for example, uh, heavy vehicles. So they are reducing SO2 for an, a big uh, oil and gas. So they are also working th with the different innovation labs. So they have like IoT lab, smart engineering lab, 5G lab, environmental facility, uh, and electric vehicle lab. So they have like different R&D labs in the innovation segment. If you look into the financial segment, for example, their sales has increased from 1,343 crores in March 2019 to almost 1,688 crores in December 2021. So their net profit is about 250 crores in the last quarter and their uh, OPM is also increased to 22%. And if you look at the year over year sales, they increased from 2,600 crores in March 2015 to almost 6,250 crores in March 2022. And if you look at their net profit increase from 300 crores to almost 890 crores, uh, their operating margin increased from 15% to 21%. And if you look at the sales growth, it's 12%, uh, 5 years profit growth 9% and their return on equity is about 29%. So then if you are looking into their dividend payout, uh, so they are doing about 35% and if you look at their uh, balance sheet, so they increase their balance sheet from 1700 crores to about 5600 crores. So they don't have any debt. So there is also about 3500 crores. So yeah, they are having increasing their investments as well. And if you look at their cash flow, so they are having a very good uh, operating cash flow and then they are also doing a lot of investments. So they don't have, have much uh, free cash flow. And then if you look at their pad growth uh, from the analyst expectation, so they are expected to do about 8,200 crores, 8,000 to 8,200 crores in 2023. And they are expected to do about 9,500 crores in 2024. And if you are looking into profit after tax, it is expected to be 1,200 crores in 2023 and 1,350 crores in 2024. And if you look at their shareholding pattern, so their promoter is almost holding steady. And if you look at the FIS, uh, they increased slightly. And if you look at the DIA, they increased and then now currently slightly reduced. If you look at the mutual funds, what they are doing in the previous month, they are selling in August, they are selling in September, they are selling in October, they are selling in November, they are selling in December, they are selling in January. So the mutual funds are keep on reducing this particular company. And if you look at the uh, different uh, in mutual funds which are holding this company, so it's Nippon India Growth Fund, Access Midcap Fund, UTI Midcap Fund, Sundaram Midcap, Tata Digital, Aditya Brilla, SBI Magnum, Invesco, ICICI, HFC. So most of the uh, mutual funds are almost uh, different mutual funds are holding this company. And uh, top holders, they almost uh, most of them did not do anything. They did not buy, they did not sell. Some mutual funds uh, reduced their holding, very few increased the holding. So then I feel most of the companies are uh, seeing this company very long term potential but then they are also seeing the valuation seems to be high for the short term. And if you look at the valuation section, so the revenues uh, they are doing about uh, 6,200 crores in 2022, they are expected to do about 8,100 crores in 2023, 9,500 crores in 2024 with a growth of 30% and 17%. If you look at the net income, they are about to do about 1,200 crores in 2023 and 1,350 crores in 2024 with a growth of 35% and 13%. If you look at the current PE which is 52.5 and if you calculate the price target with the current PE of 52.5 it is expected to do about 5,943 rupees in one year and price target of 6,686 rupees in two years with the price cumulative growth of 30% for one year and 51% for two years. 
but then I feel this valuation is a bit expensive so for the long term so they can grow about 20 percent uh, so for a company uh, technology company for a company they are growing about 20 percent uh, it's just a very good growth but then um, I feel uh, 52 is bit expensive because uh, their average P was about 23 and 25 uh, for the previous years but then um, yeah the P of 52 seems expensive for the growth of 20 percent so personally um, I would calculate with the P of 40 so if you calculate with the P of 40 the price target would be 4528 rupees for one year and 5094 rupees for two year with the price cumulative growth of 2 percent and 15 percent so if you ask me uh, what is my personal opinion whether I will buy this stock or not so I will not buy uh, this company at this current price because I feel the valuation is expensive so technology companies run up quite a lot most of the companies are correcting so um, I still don't believe they are uh, in the value uh, territory yet so they are still uh, expensive so I am not buying uh, this company but if you are an existing holder uh, and if you have a long term overview you can of course hold this company because they are still going to grow uh, phenomenally with the growth they are in a digital business they are a market leader so this company is phenomenal so they are going to grow at a very much uh, big company so I believe uh, yeah you can continue holding if you are an uh, existing holder please don't sell this stock and keep holding so it's a very good uh, company for the long term but if you are buying uh, for example this company if you're a new investor if you want to get into this company I believe this is not the right time to get in or uh, the price is a bit expensive uh, so I don't um, feel uh, we have a very good risk to reward ratio so I will not invest in this uh, company if you are a new investor so that's my personal opinion you can always have contradicting thoughts so anyways if you have a long term uh, overview yeah you are going to make money in this stock but I don't know how much uh, because of the valuation so yeah personally I will not invest in this stock so I but I am keenly following all of the technology stocks because um, I usually I love to have technology stocks but uh, most of the stocks are pretty expensive that's why I am currently out of the uh, technology stocks um, yeah I am still holding some of my holdings I, I bought at the very low prices but at the current prices I am not buying any of the technology stocks so that's my personal opinion you can have contradicting thoughts so if you like this video please like share and comment and if you are a new investor or new, uh, new to this channel uh, please uh, subscribe and if you want a free email newsletter from this channel so please uh, subscribe in the link below so thank you for watching and have a nice day bye bye